Hey y'all, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these really awesome little purse caddies out of Dollar Tree pot holders and Ziploc bags. Now, you are going to need a very basic knowledge of sewing in order to do this. You can do it by hand or you can use a sewing machine, whichever. I'm going to use a sewing machine. Uh, this is a craft that I had on my blog back in May of 2016, and I'm going back through all of my old posts and trying to make videos <laughs> showing people how to do them. But this was one of my most popular crafts on the there. As you can see like on the inside, like in this bag, I have a lip balm, I have some lip pencils, you have bandages you could put on a sewing kit. Uh, you can also make bigger versions of these by using placemats and freezer bags. So I hope you like it. Stay tuned and I will show you how to make them. Alrighty, let us get started. First off, of course, you're going to need a pot holder. I got this one at Walmart and also got this one at Walmart. Tons of cute designs. Yeah, Dollar Tree has them, but my Dollar Tree was out. I guess someone had a, a pot holder fever or something and went and just took them all. You're also going to need a button, some tape, a pair of scissors, an ink pen, a marker, a piece of chalk, or something just to help mark the center of your pot holder here. You also need a needle and thread. If you have a sewing machine, that's really going to help you out here. You don't have to. You can hand sew this. I highly recommend using a sewing machine. That's what I'm going to be using. Now, this first part is 100% optional. I just wanted to add my name to this, okay? So what I did is I used my Cricut Maker and I cut my name out of some HTV vinyl. I'm going to flip it over. This is the inside of the pot holder, the part that you're not going to see on the outside, and your loop needs to be at the top. I just folded it in half, just like this, and then I measured you know, about how big I wanted my, my name to be. And I came up with five inches wide and two inches tall. So that's what I'm going to be to be going for. Now I've got the Cricut Easy Press. You don't have to have this. You can just use an iron. But, oh, the light's green and it's ready. So I'm just going to set that on here just for a few seconds just to preheat my fabric. It makes ironing on the HTV vinyl so much easier. Okay, that should be done. Let's put it back in this little holder here. Yeah, and I don't care about this table. This is just my old crafting table. I have to place my name. I get, does that look good to y'all? That look all right? I reckon. I reckon. Okie dokie. So now I've got that on there. I'm just going to place a old piece of fabric here. And I've already got my timer set to 30 seconds on my easy press here. And I'm just applying a good amount of pressure here. And as you can see, the timer is counting down. So we'll see how this turns out. 14 more seconds. I was going to pause the video, but it's like just a few seconds. You know, I'm sorry that I'm boring y'all to death. Now what you want to do is, of course, after you get, after this is done and it beeps, there we go. Let's put this back in its little holder. I'm going to turn it off. You just want to let this cool completely. And then once it's cooled down, just gently peel the plastic back in, and your wording will be on there. Now this, I'm going to move my chair here. Sorry for the noise. Now this is not a tutorial on how to use the Cricut or how to use the, the Easy Press. I'll get into all that in a later video. This was just to give you an idea of the ways that you could decorate this, okay? So this is not completely cool but I'm gonna to try to peel it off anyway. Why? Because I'm an impatient woman. And it's coming off fairly easily. Oh yeah, okay, okie dokie. Here we go, waha, okay, there we are. See, there's my name. I picked out like this really funky font because I thought it would be cute to go with, like the funky pineapple and whatever. <laughs> but moving on, now here comes the part where we're actually gonna start making this. You're gonna need a handful of Ziploc bags uh, we're going to see how many I use. Sometimes I use six, sometimes I use eight. It all depends. And I found these at Walmart. They're in different colors, yellow, green, red, and blue, which I think I'm going to do maybe like some yellow and green. So just let's get a few out. Now what you want to do is you want to take the actual little Ziploc part here and put it to where you see the edge of the bag here. It's like at the edge of this little this little flap here. You see, here's your seam, and then here's this little flap. Take the edge of this plastic and put it right there at that little flap right there. Now, this is why you need your tape. Oh, loud noise. 
this is why you need your tape. You just want to take a little bit of that tape and just put it kind of like right there. This is just to hold the bags in place, okay? Because the bags are, yes, they are slippery. They are slippery. So we're just using the tape to hold them in place. Now I'm going to do this first bag and then I'm going to show you what to do with the second bag. Now with your second one, you see how we put the Ziploc side on this end? Now for our next bag, we're going to take the Ziploc part and have it facing this side. Okay, so place that bag down and have your little lip here kind of like right where that little flap is, where the seam is on the edge. Just place it right about there. And once again, use a piece of tape to hold that in place. I wish I had tape other than packing tape, but that's what I have at the moment. Okay, so we're just going to hold that in place like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just do the best you can. You want to try to keep your bags centered on your pot holder here. Just try your best to do that. Okay, now I'm just going to layer another bag here. And I think for this one, I'm just going to use four bags. Okay, so I'm going to layer this green one on and then I'm going to tape it in place. And then I'll layer my yellow one on and tape that in place as well. Let me get all that straight and then let me get my sewing machine and I'll come back and I'll show you all what to do next. Okay, I've got all of my bags on here. And what I did after I put the final bag on top is I took a big wide piece of tape and I just wrapped it kind of like, you know, like here and around the edge on both ends just to try to hold the bags in place. Because you, know, you don't want them sliding all over the place and it's all going to be like Caddy Wampus and, you know, just a mess. So now we're going to use our pen to make a marking. And we didn't do this a while ago because the bags add a little bit of extra thickness. So that's why we didn't do it. But we're doing it now. So what you want to do is just fold your bag in half. Ignore all this plastic sticking out. We're going to fix it here in a little bit. And just take your pen and make a mark right in the center. That's just going to help to guide your stitches, okay? That's all that this is for, just to help guide your stitches. Now, like I said, you can hand sew this. Just a plain old back stitch is going to be fine. I'm going to be using my sewing machine. i got my trusty brother Project Runway Limited Edition over here. And I gotta take my shoes off. Don't laugh at me, y'all. I can't sew with my shoes on. Ain't that stupid? I cannot sew with my shoes on. So anyway, I'm just going to try to get this as centered as possible. Like I said, it ain't gonna be perfect, and it's okay. I'm sorry this is gonna be loud, and I do apologize for the funky camera angle here, but it's the best I can do right now. I'm just gonna run a single seam just all the way down. get that out of there. I didn't run my back stitch on the very beginning, but it's okay. This is just for me. I'm not selling it. Okay, so now I've run my stitch all the way down. And here in a second, I'll pause the video. I'm going to tie off my thread. I'm not going to bother y'all with that. Tie off my thread and hide away my ends with my needle. Now what we're going to do is, let's take the tape off of one end. Well, I said we're going to. Let's just cut that right there. Okay, let's take the tape off of one end. And now you want to keep, of course, you want to keep the bags with the zipper part. Okay, that's the ends that we're going to keep. And what we're going to do with the ends that do not have the zipper part is we're going to trim those, cut them off, but not all the way down. Leave just about this much, okay? Leave just about this much because you don't want it to pull through the seam. You see what I'm saying? I will show you what I'm saying. Okay, see here is the bag with the zip locked in. We're not going to cut that because that's what we're going to be using. Let's put that down here. 
Okay, now here's the end of a bag, okay, that we're not going to be using for anything. It's sealed. You can't get into it. So just take your scissors and just cut it all the way across, like I said, leaving just a little lip on it so that it doesn't pull through the stitching. You see that? See, I'll cut it and I left just a little bit right there. Now here's our other Ziploc end. Let's get that out of the way. Here's our other sealed end. Just cut that right across there. And like I said earlier, I do have written directions for this. It's going to pop up right there. You can check that out if, if the video is, is not helping you much. But see, now you have two little zippered compartments right here. Now, I'm going to pause the video. I want to trim the other sides of my bag. I'm going to tie away the ends of my thread, and I'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so I have trimmed away my, my thread ends here and all the excess ends of the baggies, and now what we're left with is the little Ziploc part. And if you fold it in half and you notice that some of the bag is sticking out more than what you'd like, just trim it off, okay? Like I said, this is handmade. It's not store-bought. It's not going to be 100% perfect. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, why didn't you just sew the bangs a little bit farther down so they don't stick out? You know what? Because I'm trying to give you the most usable space as possible. And this little Ziploc part here that you grab and pull apart, that is huge. You don't need that much. You just need a little bit. So you can trim all this off so that you can have the most usable space as possible. Duh. So <laughs> I'm going to bring back a bit of nostalgia for some people. Uh, you remember these things. You like get in your mom or your grandma's closet and you saw this. And you're like, yes, I found the secret stash of cookies. And you open it up and it's buttons. You know, I did that several times. I was so excited and I found buttons. <laughs> so I dug out this blue button and a yellow button here. Um... To, to use on this because our, our little pouch here has to have a closure, right? It needs closure just like all of us. So find the button that you want. I'm just going to use this yellow one because it's a little bit bigger than the, than the blue one. I mean, you need it to be big enough to hold this little loop here. Okay, so just decide where you want your button to be. I'm going to put mine right here. Should I flip it over? No, I shouldn't because there's a little piece of plastic on the back and that would be ugly. So all I've done here is I've just got needle and thread and I'm going to sew the button on. We all know how to sew on a button, right? Everybody knows how to sew on a button. So just sew that on. Like I said at the beginning, you do need some basic sewing knowledge for this. Nothing too tricky. I mean, I like I like to sew as much as the next person, but you know, for a lot of my videos, I'm going to try to do, you know, like some little simple little simple sewing sewing projects. I can't even speak. All right, this should be enough. All right, so I'm just going to finish off my thread here. I said this is not going to be perfect. This is for me. It's not like I'm selling this or anything. It's for me. Of course, I have made these to sell before, and I like to take more time doing those and making them look nicer. Now, if you want a bigger one, um, you can actually use, and I've done this before too, to make things to like just throw in a tote bag or something. You can use a placemat. You can use a placemat and place of the pot holder, and then you would um, use freezer bags instead of the, the regular sandwich size Ziploc bags. And that, that works really, really well too. All right, so just fold it back in half, take your little loop, put it around your button. And there you go. There's your little purse caddy. Like I said, this, this is perfect for carrying like band-aids, just small things, you know, anything small that you'd want to throw in your bag that's that, you know, you don't want jostling around in the bottom of your bag. But there we go. I really hope that you enjoyed this. I'll try to make some more videos with easy sewing, sewing projects later on. So if you would, please give me a thumbs up, click subscribe, check me out on other forms of social media. The links to all of those are in the, in the description box. I'm stuttering the description box down below and I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.